tonight for dinner, we're gonna have red beans and rice in the Instapot. I'm gonna put a little bit of olive oil. The sausage, I found this bag of sausage in the freezer. It had lost its seal, so I took this one out earlier. It's been in the refrigerator. It's completely defrosted. Beans, Cajun seasoning, one tablespoon of brown sugar, one tablespoon of coconut sugar, a can of Rotel, and a quart size bag of frozen onions. This is two cups of red kidney beans. These have been soaked in water and apple cider vinegar. We're just gonna pour everything in. the sugar add the seasoning i open three holes steady hand back and forth two times if the sausage was still frozen i would use my hands to break it into pieces but since it has defrosted i'm going to slice this up and get this open this is two links of smoked venison sausage add our sausage and our rotel i want the onion completely submerged and the sausage on the top all of our beans are covered we're going to cover close the valve pressure cook on high for 30 minutes Okay, it's been 36 minutes. I'm gonna open this up and see what it looks like. All right, let's see if we need to put this on. Oh yes, we definitely need to put this on saute. This is like a soup. Way too much liquid. My husband just made a face. He's like, I don't want red bean soup. Daddy, you know we're gonna fix this up. We're gonna put it on saute. I'm gonna grab a cup so I can put get some of this liquid out of here. All right, it's a minute later. I wanna show you what I've done. I just put it on saute. I took a cup of liquid and I put it aside in one measuring cup. And then I took out about three or four spoonfuls of beans not the sausage, just the bean. And I'm gonna use a fork and I'm gonna mash as many of these beans as I can. And I mashed them really quickly. Now we're gonna add them back to this liquid. And now I'm gonna give it a stir. Five minutes later, I'm finally satisfied with the thickness. Let's go ahead and serve a plate. Oh, this is the extra liquid. I am going to put this in the refrigerator and I will probably drink this tomorrow or you can freeze it. We're gonna serve with white rice garnish with a little bit of parsley. I want to taste it and give you a comparison to when it's prepared in the crock pot with the exact same ingredient paste. It tastes like a mix between when I cooked it on the stove top within a Dutch oven and when I cook it in a crock pot. Like if I were to take both dishes and put them together in another pot and that's what this tastes like. That's really good. Give it a try. I would say if I did it again, I would drain the beans before I added them to the Instapot if you use the frozen onion. If the onion's not frozen, then you can use the liquid. All right, guys, hope you give it a try and let me know what you think. We have eggs several times a week. This is mixed mushrooms. Do big batches of mushrooms and then I vacuum seal them and throw them in the freezer. And I also do greens, onions, greens, and garlic. Now, I don't know what kind of greens this is. Some kind of greens from the garden. I use any and all kinds. Cook them down with onions and garlic and I'll pull them out to make quick, easy breakfast. Sometimes I make omelets. Sometimes I just heat this up and then put a fried egg on it. This is some of the blueberry cheddar cheese that we had for our charcuterie board on New Year's Eve. So it really needs to to be used up. I've been slowly taking a few pieces and eating it with my eggs. This batch seemed to have more onions than greens, but sometimes there's more greens than onions. There's a little bit more water in these because they're not all the way defrosted. That's okay. I'll just let it cook out a few minutes. Quick and easy breakfast. And this is one of the things that I always like to have prepped in the freezer. So I'm going to heat these up. I'm frying my eggs. I like to use good quality cheese as much as possible and then use it sparingly. Here's my eggs over easy. And then I take my slices of cheese and I just put it on top of the egg and breakfast is ready and served in a matter of minutes. It's my mouth is watering just looking at this. Tonight for dinner, we are making Tuscan chicken. We're gonna use half of this pack of chicken breast that I have pulled out of the freezer. We are gonna use some Parmesan cheese, an onion, some garlic, some paprika, some Cajun seasoning, maybe a little bit of butter. I have a little bit of almond flour. I like to use almond or coconut flour when I'm drenching chicken. I have the rest of that frozen spinach that we had a couple of weeks ago. That's what's left. We're gonna use that up. White wine, a little bit of chicken stock. We are finally gonna use up the rest of this heavy whipping cream. I do have some more shelf-stable whipping cream. I have a half a jar of sun-dried expired tomatoes that need to be used up. So the whole dish was based on these two things. But I also have mushrooms in a can that need to be used, so we're gonna use these. I oftentimes base meals around specific ingredients that I have that want to use, be used up. Sometimes it's stuff out of the freezer. In this case, it's stuff out of the fridge. So instead of slicing these chicken breasts, I'm going to use this little meat tenderizer. It's like a stamp. I'm going to use that to flatten out the chicken breast. 
If I wanna stretch it and make it go further, this does the same purpose, but I don't have to take the time of slicing them in half. They thin out this way. I think I'm gonna do two tonight and then I'll save three for tomorrow's dish. Now that we have the chicken seasoned on both sides, I'm gonna go ahead and use the almond flour to coat it and then cut it into a few pieces. So it'll cook really quickly. So the chicken's been seasoned really well and then coated with the almond flour. Now it's resting. I'm heating up some oil. I'm also gonna boil this red lentil spaghetti. This meal is gonna come together in 20 minutes because of how thin I cut the chicken and how we're gonna prepare it. So cooked about three minutes on one side before a flip six minutes total while the chicken finished browning i went ahead and i shredded parmesan cheese i took the chicken out added the onion i have not added any liquid yet besides a couple of pieces of frozen bell pepper and a drained can of mushroom i did turn the heat down to low now i'm gonna add a tablespoon of the red chili flakes and half a jar of the sun-dried tomatoes in olive oil four ounces roughly once we mix everything up then we're gonna turn the heat higher there's plenty of oil nothing is gonna stick or burn Another empty jar. Praise the Lord. Add our garlic. It was five cloves of frozen garlic that I sliced up. I'm gonna add a splash of white wine, chicken broth. This is a cup and a half, but we're gonna start with just a cup. Turn the heat up, bring to a boil for about four minutes. Four minutes later, this is what we have. The sauce has reduced to half. We're gonna go ahead and put it in your lowest setting possible. Now we're gonna add our spinach. I'm using that frozen spinach. So that's why I did not add all of the chicken broth at once. There may be enough moisture in this frozen spinach that I won't need to add any more chicken broth. If you're using fresh spinach, you may wanna go ahead and add all of your chicken broth. So this is a pound of frozen spinach. Give that a chance to cook down for just a minute. A minute later, this is what we have. Now we're gonna add our cream. I was so happy to finally finish off this heavy whipping cream that's been expired, it's still fine. Of course, if it smelled bad, I would not have used it, but I would not get rid of it just because of a date. I go more by look and smell than I do uh, suggested sell by date. All right, we are definitely gonna need more. This shelf stable whipping cream is something that I always pick up at Trader Joe's because it's a great thing to have in the pantry and they often sell out. So anytime I'm in there, I'll pick up at least one if they have some in stock. It's like a thick cream consistency. It tastes just like fresh cream. Now's the time to taste the sauce because we seasoned the chicken, but we didn't really season the sauce besides the chili flakes. But I am gonna add a little bit of salt and pepper. Usually I would add the cayenne, but I don't feel like digging in the bottom of the cabinet for her. Sorry guys, I'm being real. Salt and pepper's in front of me though, so I'll add salt and pepper. Once you get the seasoning right according to your taste bud, you're gonna add the cheese. This is eight ounces of Parmesan cheese, and I had a little sliver of it missing, so this is probably about three and a half ounces. If you love cheese and you have tons of it, of course, add as much as you want, but I kind of like to go with the minimum. That being said, I have more cheese than I know what to do with because I love cheese and I buy it and then I just don't use tons and tons of it. Sometimes less is more. And I think it's a good idea to go back to the depression era days and practice being good stewards and stretching what we have and using substitutions and learning how to do those things when you don't need to so that if you ever do need to, you won't be in a bind. We're gonna keep it on low and we're gonna add our chicken back. Now we're gonna turn it off, cover, and let it rest until you're ready to serve. I walked outside to get some fresh parsley and it feels so nice out here. It is like, oh, I don't know if it's reminding me of spring or fall. I'm gonna serve over the red lentil spaghetti. And this is a beauty in the pot and I know it will be on the plate as well. Sprinkle with a little bit of that fresh cheese. It does not need the parsley for color. I just like the flavor of the parsley, so I'm gonna add it. All right, friends, it is way too messy to try to take a bite of spaghetti, but, but here's the chicken. Mm-mm-mm. This is another delicious restaurant quality meal for a fraction of the price and a fraction of the time. Made simple and easy at home. Good evening, friends. How are y'all this evening? Tonight for dinner, we are gonna do chicken parm in the air fryer. Five minutes to prep, 10 minutes to cook the chicken, and then we'll boil the pasta while we prep. What we're gonna use tonight is, this is three chicken breasts. Put it in a Ziploc bag and pound it. It's what I did before I got this little tenderizer. And I picked that little tenderizer up at a discount liquidation store in my area. So the reason I like to do the chicken breasts thin is because they go further and they cook a lot quicker. So you get more bang for your 
your bow. If I would have known how I wanted to cook them tonight, I would have had them marinating. I just had them sitting in the refrigerator without any seasoning. All right, so we have chicken breast. We have angel hair pasta, an egg. This is optional. This is a nutritional yeast. And I'm gonna mix that with some gluten-free panko breadcrumbs that I had from the holidays. And then I'm gonna mix almond flour, thyme, oregano, basil, and parsley, plus paprika. Seasoning, sliced mozzarella that I wanna finish up so I can get more out of the freezer. It's another drawer marinara sauce I found in the back of the refrigerator. Best if used by December 23rd. Barely any was used out of it, but it smells fine and it looks fine. So we're gonna go ahead and use it. Glad we're using it tonight because I had this open and I still have half a bottle. So I'm just gonna try to be finding uses for it. So first I season the chicken breast both sides with the Cajun seasoning and I mix the, the almond flour, basil, parsley, and paprika. Dusted them on both sides. And now I'm gonna do the egg wash. I'm only gonna use one egg. You can add a little bit of milk if you want to the egg. I'm just gonna add a little bit of water to help it go farther. Put it in a measuring cup so I can pour it onto the chicken. Holds about three tablespoons. So this is probably about two and a half tablespoons of water. I'm only gonna put half and we're gonna mix this up. It just stretches your egg. If you have a bunch of chicken breasts, then just add more water. I just got the last chicken breast on the plate. Now I'm going to drench them in the egg mixed with the water. And I'm just going to pour it back in this container. We're going to dip the chicken. I start with a little bit at a time because whatever is not used is going to have to be discarded. And I don't want to use the whole pack of panko crumbs if we don't need it. Or I don't want to use more yeast than I need to or more cheese. So I just like to do a little bit at a time. And if I need more, I'll make more. This time I put it on a plate and I just mix it all up. Oh, let me tell you what we had. Sorry. First we had the panko style breadcrumbs, gluten free. Then we had the nutritional yeast. Then we had the Parmesan cheese. And then I had some thyme right here, some basil and some oregano, and then some parsley, and then some paprika here. So that's what this is. So I'm going to go ahead and mix it all up really well, plate, and we'll coat it, and we'll repeat, and then if I need more, I'll make more. I had enough to do two chicken breasts, so four pieces, so I am going to have to make some more of this. I had just enough of the egg mixture for three chicken breasts, six pieces, but if you have more than that, you'll probably have to add more than one and a half tablespoons of water to your egg. So these are resting. I'm gonna do these two and then we'll get it in the air fryer. I air fried at 450 for 10 minutes in my air fryer. I used about half of the jar of marinara sauce to top each piece and then I sprinkled some of the hot sauce. I'm gonna try to use all this mozzarella. I used all of the cheese and when I was trying to take it off of the paper, they started pulling apart. So it's not the prettiest, but sometimes those are the ones that taste the best. I broiled them for two minutes. And here it is, 15 minutes air fryer chicken parm. I served on angel hair pasta, coated the pasta with garlic and olive oil, a little bit of salt and pepper, and then I put a little bit of the marinara sauce on the pasta, and then I put the hot chicken parm on top of the pasta, sprinkle the top with fresh parm and parsley. Delicious dinner in 15 minutes. The chicken is juicy. It's cooked all the way through. It's fabulous. friends. Tonight for dinner, I'm going to try something a little different. It's like a lazy version of a chicken pot pie. My family is not big on chicken pot pie. It will help me get rid of some of these ingredients, so I figured we'll give it a try. We have some Jim and Nick's barbecue cheese biscuit mix. I got them thinking that we would make them at home and it's just been sitting in the pantry for over a year. I know that they need to be used. So we're going to put this on the top. I also have another can of cream of chicken and I had chicken that I had made from Instapot in the freezer. Mixed vegetables that need to be used and a pint of chicken broth. So let's get started. We are going to lightly season our chicken. I'm using Tony's. We're going to add the vegetables and then I'll season the vegetables. So all together we did two passes back and forth just once over the chicken and once over the vegetables. Now we're going to add some thyme. The chicken is defrosted but I just pulled the vegetables out and they are not all the way defrosted. Now we're gonna transfer into our baking stone. I'm gonna use the same bowl. We're gonna use the contents in this bag, cup of milk, six ounces of butter, one and a half cups of cheese, and two eggs. So I'm gonna get that mixed up and then we're gonna pour it on top. Now that we've mixed our cheese biscuit mix, we're gonna pour this on top of the vegetables. Next, we're gonna mix the cream of chicken with one pint of homemade chicken stock. Pour this on top of the cornbread mix. This is very interesting. <laughs> I shredded a little bit more extra cheese to top and we are gonna sprinkle with paprika for color. 
we're gonna bake at 350 for about an hour or until golden brown. The beeper just went off. We're gonna pull this out of the oven. I had to cook for an extra 30 minutes. It baked at 350 for one and a half hours. It looks like it's ready now. I'm gonna let it rest for a few minutes and then we will serve. Originally, I wanted to let it rest about 10 or 15 minutes, but because it took more time to bake an extra 30 minutes, it's time to get dinner on the table. So we're go ahead and plate it up and see what it looks like. And most importantly, see what it tastes like. All right, here it is, plate it up. Let's take a bite. It's good. Okay, I would call this chicken pot pie casserole, but it also reminds me of cornbread dressing that I make with leftover turkey sometimes. It's not the same as this, but it's similar. And my family does eat that, so hopefully they'll eat this. If you don't like chicken pot pie, chances are you may like this. If you do like chicken pot pie, you'll love this. It took a lot longer than I thought it would, and it tastes a little different than I thought it would. Let me know what you think if you give it a try. Thanks to our freeze dryer fiasco, I had to spend so much time cleaning that up, I didn't have time to cook. It's moments like that that you resort to emergency food. That's when people stop through the drive-thru. That's when people typically do DoorDash. Well, that's one of the main reasons why I like to have leftovers in the freezer. That's my emergency stash fast food. It really is a blessing on nights like this to be able to resort back to healthy home-cooked meals. If it's enough to feed everyone, I'll put it in a big container for a family meal. If it's not enough to feed everyone, then I make individual meal prep servings for lunch the next day. If we don't need it for the next day, then I'll freeze it in individual portions. And so in situations like this, everybody can go to the freezer and pick out their fast food leftovers of choice. Mine happens to be the Mississippi soup that we just had last week. It's just as great tonight. So guys, try freezing leftovers. Fast food convenience. Tonight for dinner, we're gonna have deer steak and a gravy. Tonight's side is gonna be leftover black eyed peas from the freezer. My husband is cooking, but I came to give you a peek. He seasoned the meat, now he's gonna brown it. We're about to serve. Tonight's dinner is served. Venison, rice, and gravy with black eyed peas. Tonight for dinner, we are gonna have salmon and broccoli. This is one of my go-to fast food meals. It defrosts in very little time. You could take this out 15 minutes before you're ready to cook it. Put it in a bowl of cold water. This cooks up in no time. It's one of my all-time favorite quick and easy go-to meals. Dinner is served. Okay, so the salmon and the broccoli was broiled in the air fryer for eight minutes. It was seasoned with olive oil and this Montreal steak seasoning. I served it over leftover white rice and I drizzled with this blueberry balsamic vinegar. Delicious.